Okay, so this video is about river processes of erosion, transportation, and deposition, and spatial and temporal factors influencing their operation, including channel characteristics and seasonality. So first of all, erosion. So let's go through each type. So abrasion is shown here, and I got this from my notes, and it basically is the rubbing of the bed and banks by the sediment being carried along by the river. Then we have corrosion, corrosion I mean, also known as solution, which is how basically some rocks dissolve into the water and then they are carried away and it's most common for things like carbonate rocks and limestone and chalk in that are kind of more soluble to water then we have hydraulic action which is basically the sheer force of the air and water on the sides of rivers and in cracks so it kind of gets into the cracks and then causes like mini like explosions that erodes the bed and the banks of the river then we have attrition which is the reduction in the size of sediment particles as they collide with one another uh, the bed and the banks but mostly with each other and then they become smaller and smaller as they move downstream and like collide with each other more and then finally there's cavitation which isn't on this but this diagram kind of shows it it's basically a form of hydraulic action caused by bubbles of air collapsing so when this bubble of air collapses it releases energy and then that like the resultant shock waves of that hit and slowly weaken the banks of the river. Okay, now we have transportation. So traction is basically when large materials such as boulders and cobbles that are too heavy to be picked up by the current are rolled along the river bed. And then we have saltation, which is like smaller materials ranging from pebbles to sand grains that are temporary temporarily lifted and bounced along the bed in a hopping motion so these are like rolled and these are more bounced then we have suspension which is it usually forms the bulk of sediment transported by a river and it comprises of fine muds and clays and grains of sand being carried in the flow of the river fast flowing and more turbulent rivers can carry more suspended sediment so just this like fine light material um carried by the river and then finally we have solution which is minerals in the minerals that are dissolved in the water so basically weak acids can act upon more soluble rocks such as limestone and chalk and gradually remove material in solution okay and now this is moving on to deposition first of all so deposition occurs when the river loses energy and that's often due to frictional impact and it loses energy and then deposits whatever it's carrying so that often occurs at deltas but now we're going to discuss how river processes are impacted by load material, course of the river, and seasonality. So first of all, let's go with load material. So this Holstrom curve is a model that shows us like the different materials of get of load and how they are impacted by um, you know, how they impact the process of erosion, transport, and deposition and also relate to the velocity needed to carry out um, these different processes. So for erosion, from this curve here, we see that clay requires quite high velocity to be eroded because it's quite sticky and it all like um, accumulates together. But then as you move towards silt and fine sands, it takes less energy to erode. And then again, when you kind of increase the size of the sediment, it, you then need more velocity again okay and now we're going to look at transportation so clay and silt are largely transported by suspension as we see here and then as you kind of move on to larger sediments it um, is transported as bed load so suspension as we saw here is moving it kind of in the river flow and then um, so, and then as bed load would be as traction and saltation and then finally deposition as we can see as sediment size increases from kind of 0 0.01 onwards there is more velocity needed to um, settle a larger um, larger load okay and now we're going to look at channel characteristics of a river and how they might impact river processes such as a meander so on a meander um, which we'll go into more detail later, so don't worry if it's like not fully detailed. But on a meander, we have the river cliff, which is like the part where erosion mainly takes place, and then we have the slip off slope where mainly deposition takes place. So, already this characteristic of a river, which kind of occurs in the middle to lower course typically, um, leads to actually simultaneous river processes. Um, 
and as you kind of move downstream the river tends to lose energy at the delta and then it would deposit so kind of in different areas of the river there's different processes taking place due to the different channel characteristics okay finally we're going to look at seasonality so climate change does impact river processes as if there's more or less rainfall or more or less drought conditions that can impact river discharge thus impacting kind of the velocity possibly and the force of the river and even things like acid rain can impact the maybe the processes of solution and that can be solution can be in transportation but it can also be in erosion and then also snow melt levels also impacts the river discharge